Today, I've got three vintage Halloween DIYs, a swag, a sign, and more. I'm Brandy, and this is Making It My Own. We are going to start off with some of these little pipe cleaners. I got black, and then I've got a variety of raffia in different colors. I've got some metallic mesh. You can use whatever color you like, but this is 10 inch mesh. I'm only gonna need part of one roll. I have a roll of mesh ribbon that is black and a variety of thrifted and Dollar Tree ribbons. And then I have three of these gorgeous Dollar Tree yard stakes. The skeleton, the cat, and the pumpkin, and they all have little hats on. So these came from obviously the Halloween section. You can see the information here. And then I'm going to take a three foot long yard stick to make our swag. We're gonna start by removing the tags and the stakes from each one of these. If you can save your stakes, you can use those for other projects. I managed to save two and broke the end off of the last one. But I can still use it for other things. They just broke that off of there. Be careful, they do have little, uh, like little staples in the backside of the stake, so just be careful not to hurt yourself. Okay, so I'm gonna go down this, just like I've done in another video. You're gonna go about an inch down and take your pipe cleaners and twist off to the side. We're gonna put another one to twist off to the other side. I've done this before and I will try to leave a link to the lady whose video I watch where I learned how to make these. And you can go check her channel out. She does really, really cute stuff. So we're going to go all the way down here in 15 sections, two, then one, then two, then one, all the way down to the end. And we're going to cut our mesh. I'm using a rotary cutter and a mat, but you can use scissors if you want to. I've just found this is a little bit easier to do. And I'm going to be using, I think I use 12 inch sections of this, maybe 10 or 12, something like that. And I'm going to make a whole bunch of these. I will try to count them and give you the information in the description box, but you would just want to be sure that you have enough for all of your little wires there. All right, we're going to have to have something to secure these onto our swag. So I'm using these pipe cleaners, some hot glue, and little scraps of paper that I've already got cut down. I like to use scraps from like the backing of stickers and things like that that come from Dollar Tree and just cut those into strips and you can use them again. And we're gonna do that to each one of these. And then set them aside to let them cool because you don't wanna be twisting those around while the glue is still wet because they'll just pop right off. So while those are drying, we're gonna start with our cruffles. What you're gonna do is take your mesh, you're gonna roll over two or three times and then take your fingers and do like you're a little tickling motion, walk your fingers down that mesh, flip it around, twist the other side two or three times and pinch it in the middle. So you almost have like a little bow tie, but that neatly tucks in all of your loose frays in the inside. You're gonna do the same thing with each one of those. If you've got a bunch of clips and you want to do this all before you start attaching them, you can certainly do that, but my experience with this mesh is that it will attach and crawl onto everything you have in your craft space. So if you don't want a big mess, it might be easier for you to do one bundle at a time. So on every section that you see here that goes off to the sides, we're going to do two. So there'll be two on this side, there'll be two on the other side, and then in the middle, there will be two in the middle. We're just making a little X and then attaching those down, if that makes sense. Just showing you here again, a little bit slower so you can see, make an X, put your X down in the center of your pipe cleaner, and then give that a few twists to hold that in place. All right, after you have that done, we are going to start cutting down our little pieces of ribbon. And we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. We're going to have nine pieces cut for each one. 
we're going to do longer pieces for this because it's going to be folded over. So you want to be sure that these are longer, and I think I've got about 16 inches for those. We're going to make almost like we would lay out a messy bow. We're going to take one of each piece of these ribbons like this, and then on top we're going to let that loop over like it already wants to do, about an inch and a half or two inches. Place that on top in a loop, and then you're just going to start walking your fingers toward the center just like that and so the little top section looks like a bow it's coming out there but you can see you just tuck it back in there you can use if you can't hold this all in your hand it's totally okay to go ahead and use twist ties or something like that on it to hold it before you put it down excuse my head i stood up to do this so i could make sure that you could see what i'm doing so i was underneath my viewfinder i try to stay out of the way but every now and then i do get kind of in the way so I do apologize for that, and, and it was a bad hair day. It was a very bad hair day. I think it's fitting that it's in the Halloween video, and it looks like I'm wearing a disastrous wig. Okay, so continuing along, we're going to do the same thing. Pinch it in the middle, press that down, pinch it up in the middle, and then we're going to place that down. Just make sure that you're not untwisting your pipe cleaner that's there on the bottom. Make sure that if you've gotten in a habit of going clockwise, continue to go clockwise or whichever way so that you don't untwist your items. I hope that made sense. I think I need more coffee. Okay, so continuing along, we're going to skip the middle sections. We're only going to do the sections that lay to the side. The reason we're doing that is because, well, it would be a waste of ribbon because we're going to have our little Halloween faces on each of those little blank spots. So all you would be doing is covering it up if you did put it in the middle. So we're just going to leave it off. Save our ribbon for some other projects. Continuing along all the way down. Now you could always dovetail your, your pieces before you start if you want, but you certainly don't have to. Because I ended up doing it later anyway. Okay, there we go. Twisty, twisty. And then the last section on the bottom is a single section, but I'm going to put it on the bottom anyway. So that's the only little middle section that's going to get a bow. Begin to fluff. We all know how to fluff, especially if you've been watching my videos. I'm crazy about the bow fluffing. Fluffing simply means pulling your sections apart so you can see each one of your little colors. See, I, I undid my bow. Not a big deal. Just twist it back on. Fluff them out. Pick them up. Lift them. Twist them. Whatever you need to do so that you can get all the pretty sides facing forward. And then, yes, it would have been easier to dovetail this in the beginning, but... You know, sometimes you get started on a project and you're not exactly sure. But I ended up liking this, so... I went ahead and went with it. And then I'll spare you. You don't want to watch me dovetail this entire thing, but you know, just so you get an idea, that's what you do. And we're going to go all the way down, fixing it up. Now, in the little bald spot where you have no ribbon, that's where we're going to twist our little black ties around and attach the sign to that swag that is underneath it. You can kind of play with your ribbon, play with your cruffles, fix them so that they are displayed in whatever way that you find pleasing. And then we're going to continue around. If you have any pieces of wires that are still showing, tuck them into the insides or clip them off, whichever way you choose. And then continue on until you get every one of your little signs fastened down. Oh, this cat is the cutest one, I think. It is so cute. Okay, so now I'm just arranging the faces, and I'm kind of, you know, one goes one way, one goes the other way. Just trying to get it. Yep, looks good to me. So then we're going to turn it over, and then go ahead and attach those down where they're not going to come loose. You want to make sure that they're all about the same depth in there so they don't fall off. Now, this is not going to be on a glass door. If it was, then you would want to spray paint your 
your yardstick black, you know, something that would be more appealing to look at, but I'm not going to be looking at mine and I did not glue down my ties. That way I could do another project with this same long yardstick if I choose. I have some more of this table scatter left over and it is orange and black. I think it looks good with what I have going on here. It is glittery. It came from the Dollar Tree. I'm just going to, first of all, cut down some of these pieces and cover up the little holes where the hangers were on these stakes. Um, that's where the price tags were. I really don't know any other reason you would want it there. I guess it was just for um, the store to show them, maybe. I don't know. But I can't think of a good reason why a stake would have a hole in the top. Anyway, moving along. You can use any ornaments you want to, or you don't have to use ornaments at all, but to embellish, I thought ornaments would be really cute. And these are the ones that you can get, of course, at Dollar Tree. And they come in these little tubes and you can get a variety of different ones, depending on what stakes that you choose, whatever will match what you have going on in yours. So I've just chosen black and orange for mine. We got a little bit of glitter in the signs. I'm not a big glitter person, but I think at holiday time, especially like Halloween and maybe some at Christmas, I think it looks, it's whimsical. You know, it's fun. Those are holidays that are supposed to be fun. I'm not into anything that is scary and that would, you know, gross you out, I guess. I don't know if you, if people even use the term gross you out anymore. Um, I'm 48 years old, so that is something that I still say. I just like the stuff that's cute and I have young kids in my house and I don't want to scare them to death. Okay, so if you remember my last video, I did the little cauldron, we made the fire underneath. Well, it gave me an idea that it would make also something really cute to put on this sign. So I'm gonna just put this around my hand, three colors here, I'm gonna do it all at one time and I wrapped them around about 10 times. And then once I get to the end, I'm just going to trim it off and I'm going to tie it up the same way as I did before. Just making sure that my loose ends are definitely in there. Use whatever colors are going to coordinate with what you have going on. So I'm just going to tie that in a double knot so it doesn't come out. Going to pull that down, hold on to the the knot where I tied it and just cut that straight through the bottom, almost like you're making a tassel. And I thought, you know what? This is so cute. It kind of looks like straw and it just reminds me of like um, a carnival or like a haunted hayride or something like that, you know, that you would maybe go to in autumn. And it just, it looks rustic to me. It looks really cute, I think. What do you think? Okay, so now we can choose one of the signs if you want to, you don't have to, but I've chosen one that was already on one of the picks we had. I mean, why not use it? It's right there. I'm gonna use a good bit of glue and this dowel because I had it there. And then I'm going to put some glue on the back to attach that together and a little bit of paper that I've just went ahead and bent over and protect your hands because it's super hot. And then we're just gonna attach this to the back of that sign. You attach that down, it'll stay still for you. And this is kind of what you got. I'm gonna flip it over and use just a piece of wire here attached to that frame, and that's gonna be your hanger. Do you like this? I really like this. I think it turned out better than I thought it would. You can certainly make this thicker, wider if you would like. You can use um, a thicker mesh besides the 10 inch, maybe use something bigger than that. But I think this works really good for what I needed. It's, I think, a good inspiration piece for you to play off of, whatever it is that you like, whatever theme that you like. Dollar Tree has lots of really cute picks, and from what I'm seeing, you can also get a lot of good stuff from Dollar General. So just see what you have, see what you like to use, and go for it. I love vintage Halloween. I've been doing it for a few years now and I just, I really love it. I think it's, I think it's fun. Be sure you follow me on my social media, Pinterest, Facebook, and Instagram. I'll be glad to see you there. 
Project number two, we're gonna make a vintage Halloween sign. This is super, super easy. This is a beginner crafter project. These are little thrifted, they're magnets actually. They have, they're like a material, like a stuffed material and fabric. This is a little metal sign that came in a three pack from Dollar Tree and I had spray painted it and used it on a project last year. This is a thrifted sign that I had hand lettered to use on my coffee bar. And I've used it for several years now, so it's time to give it new life. We're going to use it for something else. Just wipe all the dust away when you do that. Then I'm going to cut down some scrapbook paper. Use whatever you like. You can even use wrapping paper. I'm going to trim it down so that it fits inside of my frame. I think that the colors uh, work well with this. A little bit of a glue stick, and that's going to hold it in place in that frame on that sign. Then I'm just going to take my little wallpaper tool here and just lay that down just like that. And then decide which one of these little fabric pieces I want to have in my frame. And I really like the cat and the full moon. That looks cute together. So a little hot glue quickly because this dries super fast and just pop that on. If you want it to be permanent, you need to use something like E6000 or super glue or some type of epoxy to make yours stay down because these will eventually pop off. All right, and once that's down, I'm going to add a little bow. I'm just gonna use some of the lighter orange and the black and just tie a really simple bow here. Just like that, and it's just a little double bow. And pull that out and fix it how you want it to look. It's very easy to work with this. And then decide where I want to put my little bow, and I think I'm going to make it look like a bow tie underneath my little pumpkin here. Close enough. And a little candy corn embellishment. How's that? Not bad at all. You can certainly do this. Okay, now for the next project. This is the vintage Halloween mini garland. We're gonna use some thin black ribbon, some ornaments from Dollar Tree, and the rest of my little pieces here. I did leave out the witch because her colors did not match what I had going on, so she's to the side for another project. You're gonna cut a couple of pieces of jute to make some little loops to go on the back of each one of these pieces, and that's going to be uh, like a little hanger. You don't have to do this if you don't want to use a hanger because I do later end up having to glue it down to make it stay in place. But it works. It works until I get everything where it needs to be. All right, so I'm going to start off with a little black glittery ornament. Then I'm going to add the cat and then an orange ornament. And then another one and you can see I've got a pattern got a little pattern going here then when I know about how long I want it to be I'm gonna tie a knot over that black ornament in the bottom now we're gonna make some little tassels I'm gonna make three loops in this same thing as you've already seen me do on the other stuff it's old news by now you are a professional at making these things this is gonna be a little bit of a variation you make it the same way but it's gonna be tied down and then we're gonna make the tassel out of it. So I just put it all together, trimmed it up to make sure that it was nice and even on the bottom. Now I'm just going to tie it onto that piece of string. Tie one of those between each one of the ornaments. Then I'm gonna take another piece of the raffia, go down about a half an inch to an inch and then tie a knot right there. And there we have a little tassel. You can take a little dot of hot glue and press that down and make that little tie become part of your tassel. And you can see here, that's what I've done here. Otherwise, it wants to fluff out. Tie that on. And this is gonna be a cute little short garland that you could use on your coffee bar. You could use this on a tear tray. You could use this on maybe even like your vanity mirror or a bathroom mirror, maybe in a kid's room on the, maybe a dresser mirror or something like that. It's just a little garland for a small place that I think has a big impact. It's very festive looking. 
Now I'm just trying to make sure that my tassels are about the same size. And then once I get them where I want them to be, and I know how much spacing I need, I'll go ahead and glue them down. And so that's what you see me do, doing there. I'm just gluing down the ornaments, the garland, and the little cloth pieces. Just like that. It's very inexpensive and pretty easy to make. I would love for you to subscribe to my channel if you are not already subscribed. Our family is growing. We're almost at 4,000 and I am just overjoyed to have every one of you here. I appreciate the comments, the support, the love every time you share a video. Which one of these are you going to try? Do you like vintage? I've got some more coming. Thank you so much for stopping by and I'll see you again soon.